When it comes to affordable dive watches, the Seiko SKX cemented itself as the undisputed value leader for decades. But frankly, things have changed. And this perennial leader of budget divers has since seen the rise of new watches itching to take its spot. So in this video, we'll talk about the SKX's iconic status, provide an overview of the watch itself, and see where this legend stands in watchmaking in 2022, in my opinion. Let's jump in. Now, before we jump into this video, if you want all things dive watches, a overview of the entire industry, what are some of the best dive watches to go for, check out our blog looking at 50 of the best dive watches on the market, looking at a variety of different price ranges. I'll have it in the description down below. Uh, the entire team put together some of our top picks. Of course, we couldn't include everything in this list, but that guide as well as other guides on our site, I think are great jumping off points as you're starting to begin your research for that next dive watch in your collection. Definitely subscribe to our newsletter if you want written content that's completely separate from the content we're creating here on the YouTube channel channel sent to your inbox every single week, so be sure to subscribe to that on teddybaldasar.com. Setting the stage with some background, the black dialed SKX007 and the Pepsi SKX009 were released in 1996, the newest installments in Seiko's rich dive watch history that stretches back to the 1960s. The SKX borrows the majority of its design language from its predecessor, the 7002, which was itself essentially a slimmed down version of the venerable 6306 and the 6309 that was in production from 1977 to 1988. In immediate success, the ISO rated SKX ticked all the right boxes for value seeking recreational, military, and commercial divers. Running on the reliable but now antiquated 7S26 caliber and being equipped with some of the watch industry's best loom, the SKX quickly earned a reputation as a bulletproof inexpensive tool watch that also looked a lot more expensive than it was. These traits connected with the budding internet watch community of the late 1990s and early 2000s spawned legions of fans and solidified the SKX as one of the most common points of entry into the world of watch enthusiasm for an entire generation of collectors, myself included. Despite its unquestionable status as an icon, the SKX was ultimately discontinued though in 2018, causing prices to increase to previously unimaginable levels of up to $500 for a watch that was for many years readily available between between $100 to $250. But before we delve into the dynamics of the SKX and kind of where it is in the market, let's take a look at the watch itself and what it offers in terms of actual specifications. Starting with a conversation of the case and wearing experience presented by the SKX, it comes in with a 42.5 millimeter diameter when measuring the case from the two to the eight o'clock and a bezel measuring around 41 millimeters. Thanks to the impressively abbreviated 45.5 millimeter lug to lug and the visual real estate occupied by the bezel, the watch wears significantly smaller than that diameter might indicate. For me operating like a 40 and a half to a 41 millimeter watch, and I believe this idea was another less spoken factor in its meteoric rise. In terms of its thickness, the SKX is relatively tall, or just at least on the standard of many dive watches at 13.3 millimeters, taking into account the flat mineral crystal, though the organically sloping case sides aid in breaking up at least a little bit of the visual perception of thickness. For finishing and case construction, the SKX features directional brushing across its top surfaces with polishing along the curved case sides. The edge of the bezel and the screw down crown that is stationed between crown guards in Seiko's customary four o'clock position. With the help of the crown and screw down case back, it enables this watch's 200 meters of water resistance rating. The case design here offers a silhouette that is distinctly Seiko, making the SKX collection of watches an easy one to spot from across the room, a factor aided in this case by the colorful Pepsi bezel insert set atop with this one coming in a 120 click unidirectional elapsed time bezel, which operates well, all things considered. It is relatively easy to align with the chapter ring, but it does exhibit minimal back play. Set between the 22 millimeter lugs, the SKX here comes accompanied with a black polyurethane strap, which is thick, uncomfortable, and probably best to swap with something else immediately. And when you do, you will not be short of options. However, we opted for a classic gray NATO strap from our site that takes the back seat to the bicolor Pepsi bezel. Getting into one of the SKX's most common criticism, the watch leans into Seiko's proprietary Harlex mineral crystal that offers a clear view free of reflections compared to Sapphire. However, this is offset by the downsides of being a less durable crystal. 
With a matte finish, dark navy blue primary surface, the SKX009 dial is complete with triangular and circular indices printed in white, each with its own proportionally smaller application of loom bright luminescent material. Paired with the loom within Seiko's distinctive polished handset, the SKX is one of the all time loom leaders regardless of price. With this brand new example we have here in for review glowing like a torch, even after brief exposure to a light source. Tracking the seconds is a black and white stick second hand complete with a loom circle counterweight. And at three, we have a faceted window offering a glimpse of the simply printed day date wheels lying underneath. As is Seiko's custom, Saturday is executed in blue with the Sunday in red text. Adding some three dimensionality is a steeply angled chapter ring color match to the dial and complete with linear markings denoting the minutes. Dial text is also minimal with only Seiko and automatic at noon and divers 200 meter printed in red in the six o'clock position, advertising the watch's compliance with the ISO 64 standard. For me, this basic dial and hand layout, which dates back to the 6306 and the 6309 of the late 1970s, is one of the cleanest, most legible options out there for a dive watch at any price, and certainly was a reason for this watch's uh, kind of fame and rising popularity. Turning the watch over and finally addressing what is perhaps the elephant in the room in terms of the SKX's drawbacks, the 7S26 caliber powering this watch. Debuted along with the SKX in 1996, the single biggest factor going against the SKX collection nowadays is the non-hacking and non-hand winding movement 7S26. Utilitarian in its finish and architecture, the movement still has earned an impressive reputation for reliability and durability, having been utilized in millions of Seiko watches at this point, and still is often seen in older Seiko 5 references circulating the market today. But in terms of its basic specs, the 7S26 offers a 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate, hertz, does not feature hacking and hand winding, and has a power reserve around 41 hours. And when it comes to accuracy, so we tested this particular version and it kept time between minus six to plus 13 seconds a day when tested across five different positions. And while it's only fair to call out the obvious shortcomings of not being able to hack and hand wind uh, at this kind of modern day and age, it's equally important to realize that at the time of the SKX's release in 1996, those pitfalls were altogether common and the kind of thing that enthusiasts on the affordable side of the watch spectrum we're kind of used to encountering. Viewing the SKX in that context, the 7S26 made a lot of sense for that collection at the time, as we would have to wait well over a decade before the 4R series of movements became readily available. But just dwelling on that last point, I think that is a perfect segue into our final points of this video, and just talking about where the SKX resides today. Now the SKX in terms of iconic status at an affordable level is perhaps maybe the highest tier of where a watch in this range can achieve in terms of popularity. It truly is in the pantheon of affordable watches on the market. But nowadays in 2022, where does this watch reside? Now I have owned an SKX in the past. I know many collectors have owned them and there's almost a rite of passage for many, or at least it perceived to be that way for many people that were getting into watches. The SKX was kind of that watch that everybody talked about. It was a no brainer for $150 to $250 where it was mostly residing for many years and you could find them readily available all over. The modding community went crazy with these things which still exist to this day. But with those points out of the way and talking about a 25 year old watch nowadays, which is a crazy thing to think about. This is now those early references entering the world of vintage territory, which is pretty crazy to think that something made in the mid nineties can now be considered vintage, but uh, here we are. But the SKX to me nowadays just doesn't really make that much sense if you're going for the same reason that I think people would purchase it in the past. If you're buying this watch to simply having some reverence to the past and showing its iconic stature and just wanna own a piece of Seiko's very important history, I get why you might wanna look at this watch. But if you're trying to look at maybe the best dive watch in the category of say that entry level door, this watch just simply is not that for a variety of reasons. For one, getting these watches in even under $300 has kind of become a difficult thing, especially depending on where you're at in the world. We were actually able to find one of these for under $300, but the inventory and availability is all over the map. There's different date wheels and the languages that are going to be available on those. Beggars can't be choosers in this type of scenario with modern day SKXs. And then when factoring in the movement, I think that's the number one aspect of this watch that I think a lot of people just need to consider. The 7S26 for maybe a SNK 800 series when you're talking about like a hundred bucks for a watch, 
I think it's fine. Non-hacking, non-hand winding, you're talking about $100 at the end of the day. But if you're trying to pay $300 plus for this watch, it's starting to get in a range. Now what you're looking at the Seiko 5 sports watches, you're looking at Orient and their many competitive dive watches. You see what Citizen's offering and even Swiss brands for a little bit more, maybe equal value, uh, depending on where you're at in the world. There are STXs I see even just selling for around $500, which I think is crazy. But if that's the case, then it's hard to rationalize going for an SKX in 2022. And I think it's just kind of time to move on. Seiko has yet to really unveil a true successor to this watch. And I think that's causing a lot of animosity and hate towards certain just offerings from the brand. You saw those with the Seiko 5 sports watches. People were so annoyed with the fact that the SKX was no longer available, prices were going up. It's just such a beloved model that when it was no longer available, or it was just, you heard through the grapevine that this this watch was being moved on, many people were looking for a target to take their heat out on. And I think where a lot of that was directed towards were a lot of the Seiko 5 models, those Seiko 5 sports collection that have 100 meters of water resistance. They do have the 4R series of movements, but they just didn't have that ISO compliant dive watch status that so many people love with the SKX. But those watches were never trying to replace the SKX outside of maybe taking some design or architectural DNA uh, from the SKX. But other than that, it's a completely different watch. It's badged as the Seiko 5. But I say all this just because I think the Seiko SKX nowadays just doesn't really make that much sense. Is it an icon? Absolutely. If you wanna mod the thing up and have some fun, sure. But you could even argue that it's probably not the best kind of base to work with if you are trying to mod up a Seiko in the modern marketplace. It's a hard pill to swallow for many people that have been into watches for some time because the SKX was that gateway drug for divers and just watchmaking in general for many mechanical watch enthusiasts. And that even includes myself. So simply put, the SKX is absolutely worthy of that overused term of icon in watchmaking. It is in the pantheon of affordable dive watches without question, and maybe sets the standard or at least did in the past. But in 2022, I think it's time that we have to officially move on because it's not the watch that it once was, but still I think we have to always respect it for what it represented in the market. And I think we just have to await for that successor from Seiko to eventually come. And when it does come, I know it's gonna be crazy and people are gonna be ready to buy. But all right guys, that is my take on the Seiko SKX. I'd love to see what you guys think of the SKX because I know it's a huge part of just the online community on YouTube and other places. What are your thoughts of where the SKX just resides in 2022. Please leave comments down below, love to see those. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Would appreciate that as well. Definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all of the new products that we offer. We also did recently just launch a pre-owned section where you can buy and sell pre-owned watches. Definitely fill out the form if you're looking to move on from your watch and we'll get in touch with you. Be sure to stay up to date with the content on Instagram and see some great photos of watches in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.